What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Ramblings of the Sea. Today we're continuing our new series looking at the history of Gurdwaras in the UK and we're diving into the fascinating history of Ramgurya of Gurdwara in Coventry, one of the earliest Gurdwaras in Britain. The Dhamgiri of Gurdwara, which was the first Gurdwara established in Coventry, was just one of three located on the city's major artery, Falls Road. It was founded in 1965, the same year that at least one of the Gurdwara was inaugurated in the city. The Coventry Sea Community, one of the largest sea communities in the country today, you can even check the census, can trace its origins to the 1940s with a large wave of Sikhs settling in Coventry in the following decades. The first wave of immigration post the Second World War was largely composed of men from the Punjab region who were seeking work in British industry, particularly seeking jobs in factories, foundries or in construction. It comes as no coincidence that many of those moving to the country came to Coventry. It had been one of the most heavily bombed cities during the Second World War and required labour not just in its factories but also to help with reconstruction. The following interview is from a report in 1987 where the interviewer asked Zia Butt, the community development officer with the Coventry Council at the time, as to why he came to Britain 34 years earlier in 1953. Well, it is a very simple answer because post-war economy needed the people and the Brit British was crying out and Inabawar even went out to Jamaica to bring the nurses. And I have some historical uh, a sort of association with Brit Britain. Not being here, but I was very uh, curious to come here and see how the things are. The 1960s then marked the second mass migration of Sikhs into Britain from East Africa. This was primarily caused by the Africanization movement in countries such as Tanzania, Uganda and Kenya. This movement aimed to increase the number of Africans in civil service jobs, which had been historically been dominated by whites and Asians. The Africanization movement led to many Sikhs being deprived of their work forcing them to move to other parts of the Commonwealth. A significant number of those Sikhs chose to settle in Britain, including my family. Unlike the mostly labour-oriented migration from Punjab, Sikhs migrating from East Africa were regarded as highly skilled, a factor we'll see that makes a difference even in the construction of their respective Gurdwaras. After an extensive search spanning several years, the East African Sikh community discovered a suitable location in March 1965 to establish their own Gurdwara. The chosen property, a large vacant detached house situated at 1103 Falls Road, was procured by the Dhamgiriya brothers, marking the end of a three-year quest for a fitting locality. With tremendous effort from the local community, the house was transformed with the grounds cleared, exterior walls painted white, and the interior decorated with the first floor rooms being converted into a worship space. The Gurdwara officially opened on April the 11th, 1965, just in time for the important Sikh festival of Vasaki. For those of you interested in delving deeper into the history of Vasaki, you can find a link to one of our best performing podcasts somewhere here. Now, let's return to the narrative of the Dhamgiri or Gurdwara. At the time, the Gurdwara was being represented and led by Mr. Dadar Singh, a Coventry factory worker, and Mr. Surinder Singh, a GPO engineer. The article about the opening of the Gurdwara goes on to highlight the similarities between Sikhism and Christianity. A quote from the newspaper reads as follows. The Gralt teaches loyalty, philanthropy, justice, truth, honesty, and all the moral virtues are powered by Christianity. The Dhamgiri or Gurdwara being one of the first Gurdwaras established in the country, and the first in Coventry, attracted the attention of Sant Fathir Singh. In September 1966, Sant Singh, a prominent Sikh leader, visited Coventry, took part in a two-hour service at Ram Gurdwara Gurdwara during his first trip to England, and was described by the Coventry Evening Telegraph as the Sikh's leader. His visit included stops at Coventry Cathedral, the Lord Mayor of Coventry, and the newly established Ram Gurdwara Gurdwara, as well as another Gurdwara in the city which we'll cover in the next video. Undeniably, the visit by Sant Fathir Singh stands as a momentous event for the Sikh community. This event not only conferred further significance upon the Gurdwara, but it also showcased the burgeoning recognition and respect for the Sikh community. This visit served as a powerful affirmation of the Sikh community's growing prominence and influence in the diaspora. In 1969, the community displayed an astounding commitment by pooling together £18,000, an amount that's roughly equivalent to nearly £300,000 in today's currency, for the renovation of an existing hall. The brunt of this diligent endeavour was shouldered by the skilled artisans from the Ramgudio community, including carpenters, labourers, joiners and various other tradespeople. After fulfilling their day's work, these dedicated individuals tirelessly set to their evening task, faithfully committing themselves not just to their professions, but also to the shared vision of crafting a magnificent functional space 
that would serve as a hub for worship and community events. While the heart and hands of the community were truly integral to this project, we must also recognize the pivotal role played by First Developments Limited of Rugby. They meticulously designed the structure, laid the foundation, erected the primary structure, and established the roof and first floor, thereby creating a solid, lasting framework for the community's cherished gathering place. The six-month project was completed on November 9th, 1969, coinciding with the 500th birth anniversary of Guru Nanak Dev Ji. The new carpeted hall cost £900, about £15,000 today, with an additional cost of £275, about five grand today, for carpet in the hall entrance and on the stairs. This means by this point that Armageddon community had spent at least, from what we can account from the newspaper articles, around £320,000 in today's money. The opening ceremony of the renovated Godola was performed by Councillor Mr. I Singh from the Indian High Commissioner's Office, with around 600 attendees, including prominent city officials and community representatives. This event showcased the strength and unity of the Sikh community in Coventry and highlighted the Godola's vital role in their lives. Throughout the years, the Godola has continued to expand and has been a centre of charitable activities, such as raising over £100, equivalent to around £1,500 today, for East Bengal refugees in 1971. In the years since its establishment, as we've mentioned, it has continued to grow and the Gurdwara has continued to evolve and adapt to the needs of the growing Sikh community in Coventry. It has played a crucial role in maintaining and promoting Sikh culture and heritage, offering religious education, language classes and cultural events for the younger generations. By doing so, the Gurdwara has ensured that the rich traditions and values of Sikhi are preserved and passed down to future generations. So I hope you enjoyed the second episode in our series focusing on the history of Gurdwaras in the UK. A few things that stick out to me whilst putting this video together, first of all the community, proving my assumptions wrong, had the ability to pull together a substantial amount of money. Secondly, the construction of Gurdwaras is tightly linked to migration to Britain. I suspect like Langridi Gurdwara in Coventry, most of the Langridi or Gurdwaras across the country were built in the late 60s or early 70s and can trace their roots back to East Africa. The next couple of Gurdwaras we're going to cover are Gurunanak Prakash in Coventry, which opened literally months after Ramgarya in the same city, and Gurunanak Gurdwara in Dundee, which was established in the 1970s. Don't worry, we've got a list of over 100 Gurdwaras that span almost 30 cities across the whole breadth of the United Kingdom, from Southampton on the south coast of England to Dundee on the northeast of Scotland. If you or someone you know has any information, letters, documents, or anything related to the origins and history of Godwaras in the UK, please get in touch. Also, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to support the work I'm doing, consider becoming a patron or YouTube member today. Links in the description below. Also, a disclaimer that I must add to these videos is that they're not meant to be in any way extensive and are simply a summary of the history and origins of the Godwaras in the UK. Otherwise than that, I will see you in the next one.